this video, I'm going to show you uh, the beginning part, the first step to uh, removing a swing plate out of an HP LaserJet uh, 4250 series. Um, you can go ahead and just pull the tray 2 out. On this one, I already have the covers all taken off of that. Um, there should be other videos up that show you how to remove the covers. Um, in the back, you can take the fuser out. Again, that we already have a video for that. You just pull those blue tabs, it slides out. And if you look in here, you can see right here is the swing plate. And that is what drives the fuser. And you can see these teeth are super worn down. And a good way to tell, a lot of times, it's easy to tell if those need changing. When you open up the back cover and take the fuser out, there will be a ton of uh, dust that has accumulated right here, right below the swing plate from the, the two gears grinding together. Um, and it wears it down and causes all that dust to form, so that's a good way to tell. But uh, it's usually pretty obvious when a swing plate is bad. And uh, audibly you can know when one is bad by the sound it makes because uh, it sounds almost like a machine gun going off. It's so loud, so it's pretty obvious when you need to change one. Um, the first step you're going to want to do then is you can remove the formatter by removing these two screws. Again, I believe we have this on video already as part of the cover removal videos, but I'll just show you again how to do this. You just grab it, just pull it straight back, and then there's uh, let's see, five cables that you need to unhook from the DC controller. These two white cables right here, you can unhook those. This, there are two red cables right here, this one, and this one. Not that one. And... If you have to unhook any of the other cables to get this one out, that's fine. Just plug them back in. And then the last thing you need to get is the power cable. You just undo that. Push down on this. Pull out. And then get all the wires out of the harness and free like that because you'll have to pull these through a hole on the bottom here of the wire harness because they connect to this giant board here, the power supply, and they have to come through the hole on the inside before you can pull that out. Once you have the cables uh, unhooked and the formatter off, there are a number of screws that you'll have to remove. Um, it'll be this one, this one, and that one. This star screw, this one, and these two self-tapping screws. And on the other side it is these three are kind of the mirror of the other side they go into the power supply so you want to remove those three as well as these two and this metal bar that is going to below the fan which covers up the connectors for the fan that off and you can see below the fan there's one cable right here that needs to be unhooked and there is a black one on the right side that needs to be unhooked so after you get those unhooked and you can start getting your screws out Back to the other side.
And there it is with all the screws taken out. And we'll call that the first step of doing the swing plate. I'll do another video soon showing you guys the next step as well. Alright, in this video we're going to be doing part two of the removal of a swing plate from an HP LaserJet 4250 series. Um, as you can see, we already have the formatter off. Uh, we've unhooked the, uh, the wires from the DC controller, which included the power cable, three of these red cables, um, with their corresponding hook-ins here being right there, right there, and right there. Those are the three red ones. Each spot on the DC controller has a specific cord for it, and it, only one cord will fit on it, so you can't plug these into the wrong slots. So you'll just have to, all you have to do is find the one that matches up the amount of connectors on here. And also, if it has a black connector, it usually hooks into a black one on here as well. And then the final cables were these two white cables that we unhooked. Um, the first step, and also, let me show you the screws again that we removed. On this side, we had removed the two that were holding this bar into place from right here and right here, which covers these connectors the, from the fan going into the power supply. And then also these three. And then on the other side of the machine, uh, we had the mirror of those three right here, as well as a star screw right there, this screw right there, and then the two right here that hold in this plastic piece, which we will be re removing right now. This is just a guide for the power supply. Um, you remove it by pushing in this little button right here and just sliding it straight back. You can see once you remove it that the holes are right here for lining it back up when you reinstall it. So you just line it up like that and just push it forward and it locks into place. Once you have that removed, you need to take out this metal bar, which is the power switch. The right cover hooks into this. And what you do is you just lift it up and rotate it away. And then if you look in from the back, you can see where it's hooked into back there. And it just comes straight down like that. And then you pull it through. So when you're reinstalling it, I'll show you on this side. This is the hole where you want to stick this bar through. Once you have it like that, then you just find the hole, lift it up into it, and then you just rotate it back into place. So again, you just do it like that, straight down, it comes right out. Once you have the, uh, the guide removed and the power supply or the uh, power switch bar removed, the last thing you have to do before you can pull the power supply out is you have to get all of these cables through the hole that you can see in the inside of there. Right there. Uh, you're going to want to start by pulling the white cables through. They're the easiest to get through. Just let those hang out. Um, generally I go after the power cable next to get it out of the way of getting all these red cables in. And I usually start by just grabbing the head of this and just pushing it through. And just pulling that through. And then once you have that out, it's pretty easy to just grab all the red cables at once and pull those through as well. Once you have that all inside of the machine, get this loose so it's not hooked into the chassis anymore. Lift up and straight out. And you can see that this one definitely needs blowing off. It is really dirty. It's collected a lot of toner and dust. So it's a smart idea to blow these off and get them cleaned up before putting it back in. And then once you have that out, there's another plastic guide that needs to be removed right here. And again, it's the same idea as the other one. You can see the, the button that you have to push to pull it out. And it just, again, it just slides straight back. You can see it lines up right there, falls right out. After you get those guides out, you can see that now you have access to the actual swing plate. 
there are three screws you can only see two of them in, in here but you can see how worn down that gear is and uh, so we'll cover re removing the actual gear itself and reinstalling on the next video thanks for watching all right, this is part three of removing of the swing plate from an HP LaserJet 4250 series. Um, you can see here that we have just removed the power supply from the printer, which finally let us see the actual swing plate screws that hold it in. Um, you can see here that this plastic piece, I already have it removed. I'm going to put it back in and show you how to remove it again, but I just wanted to show this these tabs on here because it's difficult to see when it's in place. There's a tab on top. And then there's a tab on the bottom as well. You have to pinch these in when you remove this part. And you kind of have to do it one tab at a time and just kind of work it out as you go. Um, this is what it looks like when the plastic piece is in place. And you can see that it holds the swing plate in. So you have to, re to remove that before you can get the swing plate out. On the side of the machine, you can see here the bottom tab is right here. And if you look here... If you look just underneath the metal part right here, you can see the other tab is right there. That's kind of the difficult one to show while it's actually in place. So I will show how to remove that quick. What you want is just a flat, flathead screwdriver, and you just want to get you want to get it on top of the tab, right underneath the metal part right here, and on top of the tab. And then what you do is you push down on that tab. And then you have to just wiggle, wiggle it about as far out as it'll go with just the top tab being pushed in. So you can see it's it's you know a quarter of the way through, and it won't go any further until you get the bottom tab up. So at that point is when you take it and you lift up with on the bottom tab, and finish pulling this through. And then once you have that out, push down on the lifter drive motor right here. You can see it's spring, uh, spring activated here, so you can just push that down and then just tuck this back behind to get it out of the way. And then once you have that out, you can see uh, there's one screw right here that needs to be removed. There's another one in the back right here. And then the third one you need to get from the top of the machine, and you can see it right there. I'll start with that one. You have to be really careful when you're removing these black screws from the swing plate because they seem to be softer than any of the silver screws and a lot of times if these swing plates haven't been changed in the machine yet these screws are kind of tightened down into place really hard and if you don't get a good solid uh, grip on the screw it's really easy to strip the heads of these and once that happens you're kind of in a nightmare situation of trying to break a screw off on the inside of a machine just to get it out so um, it's best to get in on this one. And once you have it locked in, really push it against the machine and, and, and very cautiously turn it um, and try to be just uh, conscious of the of the tension that, you're, that is, it's giving back to you because you just really don't want to strip that screw. Get that one out. All right, now that you have the three screws out, you can actually remove the swing plate itself. Um, you do that by just gripping it like that, kind of pulling the bottom away, and then just kind of rotating it down like that. <clears throat> you can see this part of the swing plate right here needs to go into that slot right there. And it can be kind of difficult at first if you've never changed a swing plate. You kind of have to wrestle with it at first for a little bit until you get the hang of it. But basically, when you're reinstalling these, you're just grabbing it like that. 
and you're just trying to get it right up into that slot right there. And you'll feel it when it gets into place and then it just locks in like that. There's a peg right here that goes into a hole on the other side. This right here locks in. When that's in, you know that the swing plate is flush up against the chassis. And you can see how it how it activates there. With and it, it, what, it, what the swing plate does is it powers the uh, the fuser. The, it, it connects with the gear on the fuser, and that's what powers it. And it is controlled by I believe it is this motor. So if you turn the motor, you can watch inside the swing plate rotating as well as the other gears in the back here. So again, you just grab it the same way that you put it in, lift it out from the bottom. You just kind of have to be kind of rough with it and pull it out. Now once you have the swing plate out, you can see here, I'll show you the teeth of it. You can see how worn down that is in the white gear as well. It's really getting bad. And it's only a matter of time before this either gets super noisy or stops engaging the fuser, which will give you 13.05 uh, errors or uh, sometimes 13.20 errors. Um, so you got the new swing plate here, part number RM10043. And I will just take that out and show you what a good swing plate looks like compared to the bad one. You can see how much nicer those teeth look. And it comes with a little bit of uh, grease on there just to help lube the... Uh, the gears and then next to the bad one it's really noticeable on the black gear just how bad this one has gotten compared to what a new one looks like so, there's the white gears so it should be pretty obvious after looking at a new one it should be pretty obvious when an old one is bad um, before putting in the new one though it is a good idea to clean clean the teeth of the gear that connect directly with the white gear of the swing plate. It's this one right here. So it's a good idea to just take a tool like this and just uh, get in there and just clean out the teeth. This one actually doesn't look too bad. A lot of times, especially if a previous swing plate has had a lot of uh, grease on it, a lot of uh, like a thick mix of dirt and dust and grease will get caked up inside of these so it's good to just clean them all out and just rotate it keep cleaning them I won't do the whole thing right now because it takes a little bit of time to go through and, and really get it cleaned out but that's the idea you basically just go through and wipe each teeth each tooth out and just rotate it until you get them all clean and then, once you have that clean, you can then begin to reinstall your swing plate, which we'll cover on the next video. Thanks for watching. This is going to be part four now of replacing the swing plate for the HP LaserJet uh, 4250 series. You can see here that we have the swing plate removed, which we did in the last video. And this is what the new swing plate looks like. Um, this is how you're going to want to hold it when you're installing it. And you can even throw your left hand on the back end of it to keep this from moving around so much. Um, you can see in the inside of the machine, this part right up here, you want to aim at sticking right around here and getting up behind this black piece. If you look at it from a different angle, I can show you, you want this little white piece that's sticking through to match up behind this hole right here in the black piece. Like, so when you look in from this angle, you should, when the swing plate is in, you should see that little white piece right there. Um, and also, on the back end of the swing plate here, you see this little peg and this right here. And those fit in to that slot and that slot on the chassis. So when we're installing this, like I said, you want to grab it where these two screw spots are on the uh, swing plate itself. And you're going to want to aim this right at, right, trying to get it right underneath that black piece up there. 
And again, sometimes it's easier to put your hand on the, the back end of this to keep it from moving around. And right now it's up into place and then all you have to do is just kind of wiggle it around until it falls into place right there. And you'll know it's in, you'll feel it click in and it also all these the spots where you screw it in will be flush up against the chassis. And also if you want to look at the other side of the machine here you can see the peg, the two pegs sticking through the chassis right there. And if you move this gear again you'll be able to see the swing plate rotate itself so that is in right now and then all you have to do is put those three screws back in When you're putting the screws back in, get them tight, but don't over tighten these. Be careful when you're doing that because if you ever have to, ever have to remove it again, um, yeah, like I said earlier in the last video, you don't want to risk stripping these black screws because they're really soft and they strip much easier than the silver screws. In fact, if you have extra screws anywhere just laying around from any other machine, if you have the, the silver screws, feel free to replace the black ones with the silver ones. It really doesn't make a difference. Um, and you might end up uh, saving yourself some trouble if you ever have to switch it again. Third screw you have to put in from the front. There we go. And that's in. Once you have the swing plate screwed back in, then you can put this plastic piece piece back into place. Just push that in there, it'll snap in. Make sure that these wires are pushed back in to their retaining clips. And the harness here, just make sure that nothing's sticking out. You don't want it to get caught on the uh, lifter motor. Um, that's how you can snap a, a wire. Because once the tray two is in, it inner interlocks with this and uh, the lifter drive motor will lift the tray up by using that so you just don't want any wires getting caught in there. Um, after you have that back in you can then start to reassemble your machine which we will do in another series of uh, videos but uh, that is how you put the uh, new swing plate into the 4250. Thanks. Alright in this video um, we had just finished putting in a new swing plate on an HP 4250 series. Uh, you can see it right here see that it's turning well. Um, now we're going to start reassembling the machine. The first thing you're going to want to do is put this guide back into the machine um, and it lines up in these two slots right here and just slide it forward. After that you can throw your power supply back in. You want to make sure you got all the wires tucked underneath it. Just set it on top of this guide and then in the uh, slot for the, the, the left side guide and it just slides in and it'll click into place like that when it's in. Make sure this part right here is lined up on the chassis pushed up against there. Make sure all the screw holes are lining up and once you have that in you're going to want to start uh, re-hooking up some of these connectors. I'll start with the, uh, the right side here, the fan the fan connector and the thermistor connector. You can see inside there is the connector for the fan and there is a black connector right here that's kind of hard to see and that is for the thermistor. Or actually I think I have that backwards I think. Nope that's right. Alright the black one is the thermistor. So you just take that and you just try to it should kind of already be in the correct shape to line it up um, sometimes you have to bend it a little bit to get it so that uh, it matches up correctly. But you just have to get it started to go in. And then just push it in. Get the wires tucked back in there. This one is usually harder than the first connector to put in because the, uh, the wire itself is a little bit more flimsy. But you just try, to, try, try your best to make sure 
let's see the uh, the connector holes are on the bottom when you're doing this there. just tuck that wires back after you do that you can put this metal bar that connects this slot or that uh, covers this slot and you can see these two little pegs here is where you just want to get it to fit in and once you have that on then you can put your screws back in on this side remember that there's I'm not going to do it in the video um, but there's one right here one right here and then these three so there's just five screws that go in on this side of the machine um, and then on the other side is when you'll have, to, you'll have to get all these these six cables that come off the power supply you'll have to get them back through the hole that you can see right here because um, it'll have to come through here and uh, above this wire harness so that it can can wrap up through the wire harness itself the best way to do that is to start with the power cord and feed it through just like we did out when we were removing it start by just feeding the head straight through then on the other side just grab it with your left hand on the other side then and just pull it through And the next one to do is the red cables. Try to just get them all at once. Um, I generally do this by trying to hook them with my left hand and then feed them through with my right until I can pull them through easily. And then the final ones are these white cables. Just get them both together at once. And just try to feed them right below all the other cables that you just put through. see those come out easy make sure you don't have any of these all tangled up and then there you go that's how you get those through um, I usually start with the red cables when I'm feeding them back up through the wire harness you just want to tuck them behind everything pull that out and now you can start actually plugging them back in. Um, remember that each uh, connector has a specific slot on the DC controller with um, a certain amount of teeth on them or a certain amount of connectors on each one. This one has four. So you can see that it matches up with the white one on the DC controller. So you can plug that one back in. Um, then it's these two connectors for the last two. Um, we got the black one right here. Make sure that again that these are on the bottom. And then the final one, looks like you're going to want to make sure that the connectors are on the left side when you're putting it in. And just make sure everything's in there real nice and solid. Um, the next would be the power cable. And then you're just going to want to get the power cable in to that little placement holder there. Click that into place, lift these wires up, and the power cable goes in. And after that, you got the final, you got the white cables. The uh, They both come up like this, so the first one will go into the bottom slot, and this one that goes over top of it goes into the top slot. And then you just tuck those behind right there. And that is uh, all the, the cable connectors being hooked in. And then again on this side of the printer, you can go ahead and put all your screws back in. Um, actually there's one more thing you have to do before the screws can go in. You have to put in the, uh, the power bar, or the uh, power switch bar. And it would probably be best if you look at it from the back side as I put this in. There is a little hole that you have to get this into. Uh, I, I went over this uh, a little bit when I was removing it as well, but I'll let, show you again how you put that in. straight up 
and then just rotate it into place. And once that is in, you can put this final guide back in, this plastic guide, which again, if you look at it from this side, let's get it in there. You just have to make sure when you're putting this in that you get this part up over the lifter drive motor in there. Line those up, slide it forward, it locks into place. And now you can start putting all your screws in on this side as well. Remember you have one right here. You have the three right here. The key, the star one that goes in to hold this uh, power supply connector into place. And then you also have the two uh, bigger self-tapping screws that hold that plastic piece into place. I'm not, uh, again, I'm not gonna put all the screws in right now, but um, that is pretty much the last step before you can start putting your fuser back in and you can start putting the formatter back on. Um, so that's pretty much it to reassembling the machine.